All right, welcome everyone. What a privilege and opportunity it is for us to share a word from the word and teach from the scriptures today. And I wanna encourage everyone to uh, exercise faith and let faith be combined with the word in your life. And I do pray that we receive understanding that we can mix faith with our receiving of the word so we can apply it to our life and so that we can apply it to our living, our daily living. And so uh, the scripture is life and spirit, and let's pray that uh, we can receive it in such a way that it can be life-guiding and life-changing as well. Uh, today I wanna bring you part one of a two-part series from the book of Ruth. We are certainly uh, looking forward to the time when we can resume in-person services safely and uh, until that time we're glad that you've joined us on facebook or youtube or on our website uh, we're thankful that you're connected with us so uh, part two i'll just let you know uh, to this lesson is coming this coming sunday august 2nd at 9 30 a.m so i invite you back join us uh, this coming sunday uh, let's continue to pray for that opportunity to be back together safely soon uh, the book of ruth is rich and deep and full of useful typology, especially regarding redemption, the subject of redemption and grace and God's plan of salvation. So let's get started. Again, part one, uh, and then uh, just come back, join us again this Sunday at 930 for part two. Uh, in regards to our spiritual uh, relationship with the Lord, uh, I, I want to reach someone with this lesson. Uh, first, to uh, someone who's made perhaps a bad choice or a poor decision or a series of bad choices or bad decisions, and you know they're, they've been bad, and you have a desire to reverse it. You have a desire to change things. And then secondly, I want to reach someone that is even contemplating right now making a decision or making a choice uh, or choices uh, in regards to your spiritual relationship, maybe a, you're making a, you're contemplating, you're thinking about making a change of direction spiritually, and you just know, you just really know that it's not the right choice. It's not the right decision. 
but your will, your flesh, your own mind, your own thinking, your own reasoning is kind of causing you to lean that way and you're contemplating. So first I want to reach someone that's already made the bad decision. Second objective of these lessons is to reach someone who's uh, in that process and maybe you could receive a word of hope and faith just in time to prevent you from making something a uh, decision that you would regret. So we're going to Ruth chapter 1 verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem Judah. And I want you to note Bethlehem means the house of bread and Judah means praise. So there was a certain man from the house of bread or from the house of praise who went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of that man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Verse 3, after some time, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they, the two sons, took wives of the women of Moab, and the name was, of one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth, and they dwelled there about 10 years. And Malon and Chilion died, both of them. And the woman was, uh, was left alone uh, in that country of Moab. I want you to think about that. Naomi experienced loss after loss. Everything she came to Moab with, she lost and she was left empty. Then the scripture says in verse 6, Then she arose with her daughters-in-laws that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard that the famine was over in Bethlehem, Judah, and that there was bread uh, in her country. And the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. So the famine was over in Judah. Now look at verse 7. Here's where our text really takes focus. And this, is, this is the good news message. Wherefore, Naomi... She went forth out of the place where she was. So I want you to get the, the story setting, the, the record setting. But then note, after she had lost her husband, lost her sons, and was left alone, she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah to the land of praise. Note verse seven, Naomi went out of the place where she was. Basically she said, I'm leaving, I'm out of here. I'm going back to Bethlehem, I'm going back to Judah. Now I'm told that every story, every player drama is classified as either a comedy or a tragedy. A comedy being a story with a happy ending, a tragedy being a story with a sad ending. So it is in life, if we're considering the spiritual condition of one's soul, so it, as we consider there's only two endings that the scripture indicates one may encounter. One is everlasting life through Jesus Christ or eternal judgment away from the presence of God. So you see the obvious question is, in the end, will my life be a comedy or will it be a tragedy? Will your life be a comedy or will it be a tragedy spiritually? So when we look at our text, it certainly appears that the account of Elimelech and Naomi would be classified as a tragedy. While living in Judah, praise, or while living in Bethlehem, the house of bread, and, and being where God planted them, Elimelech makes a poor choice when some hard times came his way. Sure, there was a famine in the land, but Elimelech could have like the majority of his people, made it through the bad times. And allow me to teach from the word tonight, the record of Elimelech illustrates to us the serious consequences of making bad choices or making rash decisions based on circumstances rather than on faith in God. Let me say that again. The, the lesson here from Elimelech is the serious consequences of making bad choices or rash decisions based on circumstances rather than on faith in God. 
Believers, sometimes when rough situations come our way and undesirable circumstances just happen, we just have to stand and endure and believe that God is going to take care of us even through the so-called famine. And I want you to also note, as you study the Word of God, that the Israelites had a system of taking care of each other during a famine. And it was actually in their civil law and code that they would take care of each other and they would be a community and make sure that everyone survived these famines. So the question is, was it a life and death situation that prompted Elimelech to uproot his family? I don't believe it was according to the record. The record doesn't indicate this. Could have this man and his family survived the famine? Certainly, just as much as the others who stayed and survived. And yet, when the hard time came, when, when the difficult time happened, Elimelech made the choice to leave Bethlehem, to leave the house of bread. He made the choice to leave Judah, the house of praise, the land that God had ordained for his people. So instead of digging in and facing the circumstances, he chose to leave. The very place that God had blessed and favored for his people, the very place that God had declared destiny over, Bethlehem, Judah, Imelech made a move rather than stay. I want to encourage somebody. I might as well just cut through the chase and give you the message. I want to encourage somebody today, child of faith, new convert, or you've lived as a disciple of Jesus for many years, God has blessed you. God has favored you in Bethlehem, Judah. And by that, I mean a type of the church. God has blessed you in the house of bread. God has favored you in the house of praise. With his grace, he's planted you in his church. With his love, he has kept you. With his mercy, he has sustained you. And, you know, sure enough, hard times are going to come. And trials and troubles and even sufferings are going to come our way. And adverse situations and circumstances and, and bad, unexpected things are going to happen. Things we don't ask for, things we don't believe we deserve. But they're going to happen. Tragedies and losses that we don't understand, they may happen and they do happen. And nevertheless, no matter what comes our way, I've got to encourage us tonight to keep on believing, keep on trusting God that he will provide, he will keep us, and he will finish what he has started in us. So unlike Elimelech, let's just stay right where God has planted us. Let's keep believing God even when the famine comes, so to speak. Let's stay put. Now let's go back to the record. Elimelech made the choice to leave Bethlehem, Judah. And where would he choose to go? Moab. Why would he not choose one of the other providences of the Israelites on the other side of Jordan? Why Moab? And I emphasize that because Elimelech knew that the Moabites would not respect his faith in God or his worship of Jehovah. Elimelech knew that the Moabites were idolaters, that they worshipped and served man-made, man-created false gods. He knew better. If you're with somebody, turn to them right now and say, he knew better. He knew better. You see, the Moabites and the Israelites did not mix. They, they were in constant conflict one with another. Elimelech knew better. So I propose that before Elimelech made his choice to leave Bethlehem, Judah, that somewhere along the way, his devotion, his dedication, his passion for God, his worship of God, his relationship with God had somehow been negatively affected. Have you noticed that sometimes, even when we know better, even 
when we have knowledge of what's the right thing to do. Somehow, our reasoning is altered and affected. And it's usually by our own hearts. It's usually by our own minds, our own will, our own thinking. And oftentimes, it's been my observation that that, that alteration of our, our reasoning and our understanding uh, and, and choices we make that, that we know better, we shouldn't make them this way. We've done so without counsel. We've done so uh, with disregard of the word of God or obedience to God. And we've done so without the leading of the spirit. And Elimelech, he made that without counsel, perhaps without prayer, without the word. Uh, he just somehow allowed his own understanding to be the decision maker. And I, I refer us to Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. But if in all of our ways we don't acknowledge him, then we're kind of on our own. And that's what happened to Elimelech. He knew better. He was raised in the truth of the law of Moses, the scripture, obedience to God. But he chose to go to Moab. So uh, let, let me just put it out there for us. Whenever, if ever, you and I think about leaving Bethlehem, type, typology here, if you and I ever think about leaving the house of bread, the church of the living God, if you and I ever think about leaving Judah, the house of praise, if we ever think about, if it, it happens to you or I, if we ever think about, I, I think I'd be better off altering or changing or moving the direction of my relationship with God. Whenever that ever happens to you and I, I'm just going to say it, stop. Stop right there when the first thought comes and bring that thought into captivity and bring it into obedience to what you know is right from the word of God and from what God's done in your life. You see, Moab was that type of the world or that type of sin. And, and it's your homework to find out the origin of Moab. You just go ahead and do that on your own. But Bethlehem being the type of your dedication and walk with God. Judah being a type of your experience with God. Bethlehem, Judah being a type of the stability and peace and hope that God has put in your life through salvation and, and the house of praise. You see, that is what Elimelech had. But he made a decision in a tough time without regard to what he knew was right. And Moab being a type of the world or bowing down to false gods or bowing down to worldliness or when, when that, that thinking appears where, and that heart attitude is detected and you find yourself satisfying your thoughts and your plans according to what might satisfy you or what might satisfy my flesh or my will, that's when we need to stop right there and remember this lesson. Remember the mistake that Elimelech made. You see, Elimelech's people were commanded not to have any dealings with the Moabites. The Lord had told them, the Moabites will turn away your hearts to other gods. Moab was a place associated with idolatry and wickedness. And God had said, if my people indulge themselves with the Moabites, it's in my sight as spiritual unfaithfulness. The typology that the Lord used was like an unfaithfulness in a marriage relationship. And lest we Christians forget, let's remember the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 and 2 when Paul says, uh, I'm paraphrasing a bit, he says, you, I have committed you or espoused you 
to marriage. I've committed you to marriage to one husband that you may be presented completely holy to Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said that the, the church is the bride of Christ and that we must keep ourselves dedicated, holy, and, and, and singularly to Jesus Christ. In that same passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul said, don't be tricked, don't be deceived, don't let your minds be turned away from your commitment and your holy commitment to Jesus Christ. So, as the Lord spoke, and as Paul has spoken, the church is the bride of Christ, and we must keep ourselves dedicated to the love of God and not commit spiritual unfaithfulness. Compromising God's standards of righteous living or by embracing false religions of the world or the associated lifestyles or philosophies of those false religions, God says that is like unfaithfulness in a marriage relationship. So we must, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the famine, no matter what anyone else is doing, no matter what the trend may be, no matter what comes our way, we need a commitment, a strong commitment that says I'm going to remain faithful to the one who by his grace placed me in his church, who saved us, who justified us, who sanctified us, so that whenever hard times come, and they will, whenever it seems like being a Christian has no tangible benefits, now I'm going to get into our real business. Whenever it seems like living for God is the difficult way, it's not the easy road. Or it seems like you'd be better off if you were not so involved in church or in the kingdom of God. Or it seems like there's a famine in your life. Or it seems like there's uh, a famine in your house. Or, or your own heart is telling you, you know, I can't find a girlfriend or a boyfriend if you're single. I can't find a boyfriend or girlfriend because I'm living this, this, this righteous Christian life. Or I'll never find a husband or a wife in the church. Whenever you start thinking that way, whenever it seems like those who are not dedicated to following Jesus are having more pleasure than you are, or when unbelievers seem like, or at least in your observation, or at least in your thinking, they have more stuff, they have more toys, they have more money, I think I'd be happier over there in Moab. Whenever the temptation comes to you to indulge in the pleasures of this world, the sinful pleasures of this world, or to begin relationships that you know God's Word and God's Spirit are telling you would be the wrong relationships. Or whenever you think about leaving the fellowship of the church, again, that's when you need to stop and consider the choice that Elimelech made. Elimelech, he ignored the warnings. And I pray tonight that this message will actually be a warning to you and I, that it will wake us up just in time if we're that one that's contemplating moving to Moab. If we're that one that's thinking about, I'd be better off over there. It's time for us to make up our mind that come what may, my heart is fixed. I'm staying in God's church. I'm staying in the love of God. I'm staying in the grace of God. I'm staying with the people of God. I'm thankful for His goodness. I'm thankful for His mercy. I'm thankful for, for forgiveness and, and, and salvation and peace and joy. I'm thankful to be in the house of bread. I'm thankful to be in the house of praise. And I just got to have a made up mind that I'm going to stay there. So Elimelech, he left Bethlehem, he left Judah, and he took his family to Moab. He took his family to the house of idolatry. He took his family to the house of false gods. And for about 10 years, everything seemed fine. 
They must have got new jobs. They must have blended in. They changed their lifestyle. They would have had to have changed their lifestyle. Everything about their lifestyle, they would have had to blend in, change and alter to blend in with the Moabites. They would have had to alter their, uh, their, their thinking about what they had been taught all their life about serving and loving the true God. But they blended in. They had food on the table. Maybe they had money in the bank. And the boys started dating the pretty Moabite girls. And eventually they married Moabite girls. And as a pastor of many decades now, three decades and plus, a few years, I've observed this is sometimes how it goes down. Someone leaves the faith. They leave the fellowship. They leave the church. They leave the house of bread. They leave the house of praise. And they, they're no longer dedicating themselves to be a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple. And for a while, everything looks great. You're doing a new thing. Running with a new crowd. New friends doing things that they had refrained from doing while they were in the house of God. And the only difference is, they'll say, usually they'll say, see, we're not affected by the change. We're not affected. Everything's good. Everything's good. I'm happy here. I'm satisfied here. Everything's going fine here. And they will tell you the only difference is that they're free now. Free from the bondage of all the church involvement and responsibilities. Free from all the, the, the righteousness uh, standards for living that the scripture lays out for a believer. But, and, and hey, we're free and I'm, I'm still a good person. I'm not a bad person. I'm just not doing the church thing anymore. I'm just not doing the Jesus thing anymore. I've kind of broadened my philosophies and broadened my thinking. And that's the way it goes for a while. But I'm going to use this record in Ruth to give us an example of what may happen. Things begin to fall apart. Elimelech died. Both the sons died. Moab, Moab became a place for this family to lose and die. And I hope that parents are listening. I hope that fathers and husbands and men are listening carefully. The choices that we make about our spiritual life will affect our children and our grandchildren. Getting less involved in church, getting less involved in the things of the kingdom of God will affect our children. Compromising righteousness and holiness will have a great price attached to it. Getting involved in the things of the world, the love of the world, or the love of money will affect our families and affect our children. So now when we look back to our text, what we have in progress is a tragedy. What we see in motion is a story that looks like it's going to have a sad ending. It's going to be a tragedy. And Elimelech dies. And Malon and Chilion die. This is a tragedy in the making. And now Naomi is a grieving widow in a strange land. Now she's heartbroken. Now she's lonely. Now she's desolate. Now she has no way to survive. And she even says of herself, I'm bitter. And I'm hopeless in this place. And if the drama had ended there, it surely would have been a tragedy. If the, if the story would have ended there in Moab, it surely would have been a tragedy. But here comes the good news that you and I can use. I'm teaching today about how the Lord can turn a tragedy into a comedy. In this case, God turned what seemed to be a sure tragedy into a comedy because we read in Ruth chapter 1, verse 7, 
Naomi went forth out of the place where she was. She went out. It came to her. This has been a bad experience for me. I'm bitter. I'm, I'm lonely. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless. But she made a decision. She decided that when death had invaded her privacy, she decided when the land of Moab had left her empty, she decided that when living outside the house of bread and the house of praise had left her desolate and broken, Naomi decided it's time for a change. It's time for a turnaround. And I've got good news for someone who needs a turnaround. God allows you turns. In our spiritual relationship with God, it doesn't matter when we left. It doesn't matter how long we've been gone. It doesn't matter how long we've been lost. It doesn't matter how much regret or shame or guilt we are carrying. It doesn't matter how far we've gone. It doesn't matter how hopeless we feel. It doesn't matter how deep we get in the mess. It doesn't matter how bound we are or how trapped without hope we feel. It doesn't matter if we've become angry at God and bitter with people. The Lord is still in the saving business. The Lord is still in the restoration business. God is still in the recovery business. God is still in the salvation business and he wants to help you and help me if we ever get in those places where we've made bad decisions. God says, hey, you decide. You can make a U-turn whenever you want to. God specializes in turnarounds and U-turns. If poor choices ever get you and I in a strange land, if poor choices have brought you nothing but grief, if poor choices have entrapped you in sin's web or taken you farther than you thought you would ever go and caused you to lose some valuable assets, it's time for you to call on God and make a U-turn. We can turn back to Bethlehem, Judah, any time we choose. Naomi heard that there was bread in Bethlehem and she went forth out of the place where she was. So anyone who wants to make a U-turn, the good news for you today is you can do it right now. If you have the want to, you can call upon the name of the Lord and He will help you get out of Moab. There's salvation in Jesus Christ. That's the message. There's recovery in Jesus Christ. There's no shortage of mercy in Jesus Christ. There's no shortage of love in Jesus Christ. There's no shortage of restoration in Jesus Christ. There's no shortage of salvation in Jesus Christ. And Naomi decided, I'm going back to praise. I'm going back to the house of bread. She had been so hurt in Moab. I'm telling you, friends, you don't want to go to Moab. Moab is a place that you're going to get uh, bitter. It's a place you're going to get angry. And the world and the devil will bruise you and abuse you. And the devil will steal, kill, and destroy and cast you down like a broken toy. So if you find yourself in Moab, it's time to get out of there. If you find yourself spiritually lukewarm or backslidden, if you've lost the passion or you've lost your desire for God, if you've grown, if you've grown distant in your relationship with God, it's time to turn a potential tragedy into a comedy. Naomi said, I've had enough of this grief and may I reach to somebody, anybody and everybody. It's not over yet. You can get out of Moab while you have a chance and an opportunity and God can turn a potential tragedy into a comedy. Just a little side message here. For all of the believers that have been faithful to God, to those that are abiding in the house of bread, in the church, we know where we came from. We know how God's grace redeemed us. We know the love of God. We know how his love has kept us. So let's just make up our mind. I'm staying where God's placed me. I'm so thankful to be in God's church. And then secondly... Believers, let's be mindful of all the Naomi's that are out there that will be coming back to God. 
we have a good news message. And we've got to tell those and help those and be compassionate and loving and non-judgmental to those that have gone to Moab or they're stuck in Moab. We've got a message that says, hey, there's bread in the church. Hey, there's, there's praise in God's church. There's good news in the church. There's good news in Jesus Christ. And God allows U-turns. So Naomi decided to go back to Judah. And indeed, she went back to Judah. I'll need you to tune in to part two to find out what happened to Naomi when she got back to Judah. But I'll tell you this much, she found provision when she returned to Bethlehem. She found contentment and peace again. She found her purpose when she returned. Her life was restored. She was blessed of God. And her bitterness was turned into joy. And her life ended as a comedy with a happy ending. You see, God specializes in turning tragedies into comedies. Jesus Christ, many, many years ago, when he came to this earth, the scripture says to manifest himself, to reveal himself as the son of God and to destroy the works of the devil. That was his purpose. He was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was shamed, he was tortured. And he was nailed to a rugged cross at Calvary's hill. And it seemed as if his life was over. It seemed as if his purpose, his mission, his promises were over. It seemed like his life was going to end in a tragedy or as a tragedy. He died and he was buried and it appeared to end in a tragedy. But death couldn't hold him. He rose up on the third day, triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And he was raised up to prove that he's the way, the truth, and the life. I've got a message for somebody today. His love is still here. His church is still here. His provision is still here. His salvation is still here. So if it seems like your life is hopeless or pitiful, I encourage you today, don't take another moment. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and ask God for a miracle. 